Welcome back. We just had a bit of a technical failure there. We're back up now live on Facebook. And uh, we want to talk about six factors that you need to be aware of when you're dealing with law enforcement. We call it uh, the six no's, N-O, to know, K-N-O-W. And uh, I'm a lawyer here in Jacksonville, Florida, retired FBI agent, former cop out of Miami. And I have some real world experience in this uh, and I'm a defense attorney today. So I see a lot of mistakes that folks make. And oftentimes I wish that I could go back and fix it for them. And it just takes a, a little bit of effort to avoid the problem altogether. So the, the first question today is, why do I need to give an officer my license if I'm not driving? And the answer is, you don't have to carry any ID with you at all, period, in the United States. Now, there's a problem with that, and here's what it is, okay? If you are unable to dispel the officer's fear for persons or property in the area where you've been confronted, that's a problem. And you can be arrested. Now, should you be arrested? Is it proper for you to be arrested under those circumstances? No, it's not. But that doesn't solve the problem for you, the individual who's confronted by law enforcement. So yeah, you can stand your ground in regard to your identification and you could say, I don't, I don't have any ID officer, which if it's true, that's okay. Because really, you're not required to tell an officer anything at all. You're not required to communicate with them. But I will assure you, if you cop an attitude with a police officer in the street, there are repercussions. Some of those repercussions we don't like, and we see them here in the office occasionally when people walk in and they've been charged for some minor crime and realize that just being arrested causes tremendous problems in your future. Just the arrest, not the conviction, not the cost of an attorney or a bondsman or any of that. Just the arrest is a permanent record in the federal system because as soon as you're fingerprinted, it's in the federal system, you're never getting out of it, ever. And people who need to know, the government, teachers, unions, all kinds of groups will know that you've been arrested and there's no way to get out of that. So, your next question. Do I have to talk to the police? Again, the answer is no. You don't have to say anything at all to them. But again, there are consequences for not being polite to law enforcement. Look, if you're not doing anything wrong, it won't hurt you to respond to the officer in a respectful way so that she'll go on and find some better target to spend her time on instead of you. And if you just can swallow your pride for just a few moments when you're having this encounter with law enforcement, it'll pay you off in double later on in life when you don't have to explain to someone about a bad attitude or why you were arrested. So, no, you don't have to talk to them, but you probably should just to be polite. If somebody walked up to you typically on the street and engaged you in conversation, you'd talk to them. So it's not unusual for officers to have that same attitude toward you, and you should certainly have a polite and respectful attitude toward them. Do I have to let an officer search my clothing? Never, okay? Our most valuable right is the right to be let alone by government. And that also means not being frisked by government, not being searched by government, because that's what it is. Now, when is it appropriate? Well, here's the rule. The rule is that if you are doing something that looks suspicious and you have a bulge, that bulge could be a weapon and as a result, the courts allow officers to pat you down for that weapon. If it's not a weapon, well, then, then that should end the search. However, changes in the law over the last 50 years have made it possible for an officer to pat you down for that bulge and have that bulge not be a weapon, which he has a complete right to search for to protect himself and others. It turns out to be a scrunchy bag full of weed in it. Now, that's a problem because of that license to pat you down for weapons, they've discovered marijuana in a plastic bag in your pocket. 
you're going to jail. And the best thing to do is to not carry weed like that with you so that when the officer pats you down, it's discovered. Now, laws are changing, but they haven't changed yet, and that'll end up in you going to jail because the officer can't just throw the weed away, which is your property. And in Colorado, of course, you're allowed to have a certain amount. But here in Florida, still, it's illegal to have, and even the medical marijuana law passage is not going to benefit people who are walking around openly with concealed amounts of marijuana on them that are discovered based on the officer's ability to search you for weapons. So you can't be searched, but we are searched in that regard, and you need to be prepared for that. Do I have to let an officer search my house? You know, the house is the most protected part of our lives. Our bodies first, the physical search against our bodies, but also our home. And without a warrant, and, and this is the way the laws are structured, uh, searches are illegal unless there's a warrant. There are exceptions. But if there's not a warrant, you don't have to let anybody search your house or do anything. And you should not allow yourself to be bullied into a position, no matter who you are, of allowing police officers to simply go into your house and rummage around in your drawers looking for material that they think is contraband. Um, that's wrong. Uh, recently, there was a ruling relating specifically to uh, cell phones. So they go into a house or a car, and they, this is not my color at all, but this cell phone, they can't simply search that cell phone unless there's probable cause to get a warrant to do that. So they, they can ask you, they can say, Dale, will you give us the password so we can get into your phone? And my answer to them is, look, I have a lawyer. Her name is thus and so. And no, I'm afraid I can't simply authorize you to do that. And then you got to shut up. <clears throat> in police presence, that's really hard to do. Once they've sat you down, you're in a dangerous position, you're being interviewed. You know, people routinely give too much to law enforcement when they're just not required to do that because it's very... Uh, frightening to be in a situation with law enforcement where the room's closed, uh, uh, you know you can't get out, you're just overwhelmed by the number of people, police officers in a squad room particularly that's in an interrogation room. I mean you walk in and there are 50 police officers there and you know for certain that if you don't behave for just this few minutes you're going to be in serious trouble and that's what results in people confessing and, and I'm not a big fan of making confessions to police officers. Look, if you've engaged in criminal activity, there might come a point when you want to alert somebody or explain yourself to somebody. But an interview interrogation room with law enforcement is not the place for that to happen. Should I let the police look at my phone? And the answer is today, you know, 50 years ago, they could have looked at it. And there it would be sitting on a desk. It's uh, got a handset and buttons or a dial that you dial. They could have looked at it all they wanted, right? <laughs> Wouldn't have made any difference. Today, when they look at our cell phones, they are peering into our souls. Now, we routinely let big businesses do this. Google, Amazon, eBay. I mean, they're looking at our preferences, what our searches are about to tell who we are so they can advertise to us. But in a circumstance of law enforcement looking in your phone, photographs that you may not think are inappropriate at all may, according to their perspective, be something that is a felony and a convictable offense if you allow them to look at your cell phone by agreeing to the search. Don't do that. They should have to go to a court and explain to a court why it is that they want to look into your phone in order to permission from the court, which is called a warrant, in this case a search warrant, to search your phone. Without that, they search your phone, find something that can't be used against you, but I will assure you that it won't prevent you from being arrested, and that's the big key. The other thing, look, don't carry something on a portable device like this that could put you in prison for the rest of your life. You put child pornography on here, you're going to prison for a long, long time. It shouldn't be on your phone at all. And candidly, today, we haven't reached this point yet, but of course, you can go from this phone <coughs> to everything I've got stored in the cloud. So you're essentially 
not only looking at the memory that's in this phone, what's stored there, but conceivably you could get into my network and look at everything in my network. So the ability giving someone permission to look in our phone is like opening our entire lives up. Now, I'm sure there are some of you who would say, I don't have anything to hide. I'm not worried about it. They can see anything they want to see. I don't do anything wrong. But I can assure you, that is not an appropriate view because you don't know what the mission of the people who are asking to search your phone, you don't know what their mission is. What are they, why are they looking at you? Why? So they may find something in here that shows you took a photograph at a certain place at a certain time that makes you a criminal. And if you hadn't shown them this with the geo print on it, you wouldn't be in any trouble at all. So let's not just routinely let law enforcement look at our phones. Password protect this bad boy. Do police officers lie? Look, I, you know, I get asked this question frequently. Police officers are human beings. Simply because you are a certified police officer in the state of Florida doesn't automatically remove you from the human population and its propensities, right? So the answer to the question is an obvious yes. They have a mission. They have a job. There are those who would very easily lie. There are those who would never lie. They're like any group of random humans that you would see anywhere. Some of them will be people who flamboyantly lie, and other people make it their mission in life not to lie because they find it offensive for moral or political reasons. So I will tell you that, yes, police officers lie, but if you're not in a confrontation with them because you've copped an attitude or you don't want to show them some license you have or something because you know the rules and you don't have to listen to what they say, you're asking for trouble. And if an officer is willing to lie, I can assure you, nine times out of ten, that officer is going to be believed before you are. And certainly the officer is going to believe, be believed when the, their supervisor, their sergeant, signs your arrest affidavit so you can go to jail while you get this entire matter sorted out. That concludes our list of questions. Thank you for listening to us today. We enjoy working with anyone who has questions about this or other things related to the law. Don't hesitate to give us a call here at my office in Jacksonville, Florida, or you can find us on the webpage at www.dalecarson.com. That's D-A-L-E-C-A-R-S-O-N law, L-A-W dot com. Look forward to hearing from you.